It's time to get to know NFL players. A movie made about my life right now. Leading actor would immediately be Denzel Washington. Man, that's a good question. And we bet you didn't know a lot about them. Woo! Ah. We're not afraid to ask, and they're not afraid to tell. One person to help get me off the island. I'm cool. <laughs> NFL players, helmets off, bet you didn't know. Hello everyone, I'm Pam Oliver. Welcome to Indianapolis, home of the Super Bowl champion Colts. And this is NFL kickoff 2007. Now chances are you know a lot about your favorite players on the field, but what about their life and times away from the action? Who they admired growing up? What's their favorite junk food? Who talks the most trash? Who some of their favorite players are? Check it out. The player I admire most right now, Tom Brady or Peyton. You know, because as a quarterback, obviously you admire those rings. I'd probably say Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Nathaniel Thomas, he's, he's, uh, he's the only guy in the NFL I fear. Only. I'm, everybody else, but this dude is, is unbelievable. I admire two current NFL players, and that's um, Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. I would say Ladani and Thomason, just because I've got a chance to get to know him over the years and uh, seeing him and on a personal level and, and how he works and, and, and uh, then to see him put it into action on the football field, um, you know, it, it's great. So we've heard from some of today's stars about who they admire nowadays, but what about when they were younger? Who did they look up to growing up? You know what, a lot of people would think that I would say my father. Um, obviously, he, he was a great player, Hall of Fame player, Ronnie Lott. But actually, my hero in that sense would be Jerry Rice. Georgia Kobe, Mark May, the Hogs, uh, Jeff Bostic. You know, John, I had a John Regan's jersey uh, growing up. Reggie White. Good respect to Reggie White. Love Reggie White. I'm good friends with Jan Stenerud, and he's, and he's the only kicker in the NFL Hall of Fame, so that's, that's a tough one to beat. Oh, I always loved John Elway, you know, Joe Montana. And, and Brett Favre, you know, were probably the, the big ones. It's weird that I ended up playing for the Bears because my favorite player was Mike Singletary when I was a little kid. And Roger Staubach was my, my ultimate football hero. And then he left the organization, or Danny White took over, and I thought he was the coolest guy because at that time he was not only the quarterback, but he was the punter. Nowadays, being an NFL player is pretty much a 24-7 proposition. But what would these players do if they had one extra hour, seven days a week? How would they spend that extra time? There's an extra hour in the day. What would I spend it doing? I would probably spend that hour just to get away by myself and just take a nap. Catch up on some sleep. If I had an extra hour, I think I'd spend it with my mother. Probably playing video games, probably Madden, football. There's just not enough time in the day to get the amount of hours I need to get on the video game and do the things that I really need to do during the day. So. <laughs> even though NFL players are celebrities in their own right, I bet you didn't know even they get starstruck. Um, man, that's a good question. I met Senator Barack Obama this offseason, and I was, I was a little... I was a stuttering <laughs> fool, probably. <laughs> I'm meeting Jim Brown. You know, it was just kind of a awestruck and not really knowing what to say. Doug Flutie. I don't know why. It was just cool to me to have him on have him on the team. I got a snap to him. That's like a memory that I'm always going to remember is that I got to snap the ball to Doug Flutie. When I met Bart Starr, I mean, there's just something about, you know, a legend of the game. And I was in the locker room. I was playing for the Bills my first year, and we were playing Chicago. Jim Kelly was on the team, Andre Reed, Thurman Thomas, Bruce Smith, who obviously are Hall of Famers. And in come through the door comes Walter Payton to say hi to those guys. And Bruce, who never stands up for anybody, Walter walks in, Bruce stands up. I knew then that Walter, to everybody, I mean, the players, was a big deal. So I was, you know, set back. I'm like, that's Walter Payton. Deion Sanders, when he first came, came to the Ravens, it was like, man, that's, that's prime. Like, that's, that's prime. I saw Beyonce, and uh, she said hello to me. And I said, hi, kind of, sort of. I don't know what I said. But I was so starstruck, I didn't even get to turn, I didn't even get to look at her as she walked away. So, you know, it was, I was pretty starstruck. When I had a chance to shake Muhammad Ali's hand, it just, you know, it, I felt like 
I know what groupies feel like, you know? <laughs> players get to meet some pretty cool people and travel to some exciting places. But what's the most exciting part about their lifestyle? Staying young, grown, you know, grown man playing a kid's game. Just being have an opportunity to play in the best game in the world. You know, for me, it's living out that dream. So I get to play a game, you know, as a job. I mean, you can just sit back and feel like a rock star. Look on my son's faces when they see me come off the field, take my helmet off. I think just the uh, camaraderie that you have with the guys, you know, you meet you know, friends for life. When I just look back over my 15-year career, just the relationships that I've developed as teammates. We can affect somebody in a positive way, and we can leave a legacy. You just have the ability to um, really make a positive impact in your community. To be able to be recognized, you know, as a role model and be able to, to, to share it with kids and share it with people. It may cost them extra suicide drills, but some players can't resist the temptation to imitate their coaches. But he's got this thing with his hand, and he throws his hand out there, and no one can quite get it right because he does something with his fingers, but we all try to mimic him. When everybody does this, everybody starts laughing because you know it's Coach Groot. I can't, I can't, I can't quite get it. <laughs> Marty's like that, too. He's always, everything's a profound speech. Write it down. Write it down. Imitation of Lovey Smith. You got to be a man, son. Once you be a man, then everything in life is already planned for you, big guy. Huh? That's Lovey Smith. Ha, ha, ha. Great. Well, we know NFL players can eat, but I bet you didn't know they could cook. That plus their competitive spirit off the field on the other side of this break.